What's going on, beautiful world? Welcome to another episode of the Black Sheep Perspective. I am crazy excited about my guest today. This girl has such a story, such a background, has has basically taken on almost any challenge that's thrown her way. She continues taking on these challenges. She's a judo black belt, absolute badass, who's competed on so many levels, won all kind of medals, got to the Olympic tryouts, missed it by just a smudge. She's competed in pro wrestling, all kind of different levels of wrestling. She's getting into mixed martial arts. She's gonna you know get her, have her first fight coming up very soon. And in the mix of all this, she jumped into the ever growing popular UFC power slap. She was, in my opinion, the first female with her opponent to do this. And she had this amazing viral video that we're going to talk about. Guys, please welcome. And I'm going to say it the best I can. She's from Hungary, and I want to try to pronounce it the best way possible. Francesca Caso. I was. Francesca Sabo. Sabo. <laughs> Francesca Sabo. And that's S Z. Francesca, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for coming here and blessing us with your presence. Thank you so much for the invitation. There's so much to talk about. You and I were talking off camera for a little bit there. I wanted to, you know, kind of, it's my first time meeting you. You're awesome. And by the way, big shout out to Jill, Jill, Rudy, and for putting us together and, and connecting us. Um, you were born and raised in Hungary. And I was telling you, man, it's the, you know, I want to hear about this because this is, you know, a country I've, I know very little of. And I'm pretty sure a lot of Americans mainly, you know, unless you're advanced on your globe and you know where things are and you're, you're, you're somewhat of a historian, you know, it's not, I don't, we don't know much. So tell me, how's this, how's this hungry way of living? Where is it exactly located and how's this life over there? Okay. So Hungary is, is in Europe mm. and, um, uh, 10 million people live over there. So it's a really small country. Um, actually, I grew up um, in South Hungary. South in, Hungary, okay. Yes, uh, in a, in a little, very little town. It's, a, it's actually a really vi little village. So I'm a farm girl, and I was raised there. And um, Farm life. Yes. Farm the whole life. shebang. But, you know, I, I mean, I, I'm assuming all type of same animals as we do, but... You're helping raise cattle, chickens, all that stuff. Goats. Goats. Lots of goats, pigs. We had lots of horses because my father was a horse. Uh, Breeder? St Stepman. Oh, I don't know. But uh, in the movies, they are like falling with the horses and stuff. I don't even know what that's called. Okay, I didn't it's know that. St stuntman. stuntman. Oh, stuntman. Yes. No, stuntman. he was doing stunts with horses. Yeah. He was helping them learn how to yeah. do. Oh, he, shit. He used to be in many Eddie Murphy's movie, too, because actually Hungary is very cheap to shoot movies there. So people go there often? Yes. And, and, and my dad was working a lot as a stuntman. And he also was my coach in judo. We had our own gym in the small village, you know, and we actually did a really... So you, your dad has a lot of accolades as well as your family. So judo has been in the family for a minute there. And your dad actually, remind us, he competed and he, he got some medals and stuff like that? Yes, yeah, so he was fifth place in 1972 Olympic Games in Munich. And European uh, medals, were champion medals, and his brother as well. Actually, it's a very nice story that how my dad got involved in judo because um, when he was, I think, like seven or eight years old, that was a gift from his brother that he took him to the judo class. Really? And then, you see, it, it just created his whole life. A around. gift as an almost like birthday type gift? Like, hey, I want to bring gift, you? A birthday gift. Really? Like, come on, my little brother, I'm going to take you to the judo class. That's awesome. That's your, yeah. That's a, that's a very meaningful gift, I think. So, so you definitely were raised with, with great ethical and, and physical ways, as in what it is to get it in and, and get your feet dirty and all that. Uh, yes, he was raising me. I, I can I can't wish like uh, a better way to be raised. Why? But but I have to also tell you that my dad had a very tough childhood life, so he wanted actually preparing us about to be ready for no matter what's coming in our life, you know. Um, you know, Hungary went through on a lot. If you're looking back to the history, especially the Second War, war was so much affecting later on on Hungary. And I think uh, actually that's ruined whole Europe, you know. Yeah, we right, we still course. like try to recovering from that, even right. it was like many, many years ago, but but it's, it's really hard. And... Um, so dad, uh, he lived 
on his own while he was 12. So when he joined the judo gym because of his brother when he was nine, um, later on there was again some tragic things going on in Hungary and his father had to um, join the army, you know, and so he was on his own and mother was going, there was a, a separate house where people were going in that they will be able to survive. I don't know how it is called in, in, in Kinda English. Kind of like a shelter? Yes, yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. But they were not allowed to bring a kid. Okay. So dad actually, judo helped him to survive in his life. He was living when he was 12 in the gym. He get a, like this room, he said, literally just a bed was there. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the morning he went to to um working um like just like you know boxing packing and stuff and then he did the morning uh training and then after school back so this is how he grew up so he was living on his own since he was 12. that's crazy you know so that's why we got really tough uh, way to to raise us because in his mindset he always thinks he's always in his surviving mood. Right. He's always thinking that there's the, is coming right. here. They're gonna they're gonna take all our right. food because even his uh, his uh, mother get raped right front of him when he was six. You know oh, when the soldiers was coming, coming through from the Russia, countries, you right. know, and us he and his siblings was seeing it. Mm. It it caused lots of traumas. You That's know? crazy. Yeah. But of he course. tried to protect us from his uh, childhood experience. That's why when right. we was born, we didn't understand so many things why he's doing this on us. You know, and yeah, and of course, and it's, I think as a parent, especially, I'm not trying to speak for him, but you know, to imagine being in that situation, it was, it was way different back then. So when he becomes this young father of, of you and, and your siblings, Times are still rough. Times are still tough. He doesn't know what to expect of the future exactly. ahead of him. So he just went through a war, or maybe two or whatever yes. he experienced. So he's got to think in his head, there's a third one bound to come. There's some bullshit bound to pop off, and I got to make sure my kids are tough and they know how to take care of themselves and they know how to do some farm exactly. life if they have to. And I don't want them being all friendly and fucking befriending all these people because, you know, and, and, and I get it. And he can't think. Oh my poor kids! They're not gonna have a normal childhood. I know that. No, he's got a no, thing. No. They're not gonna understand he until they're older. Us yeah. for life. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And no matter where we are living at, I think that's why I was able to immigrate. I was living in Germany. I was here, there, there, and I was able to pick up, you know, the the culture over there because I'm also was always almost like many times in my surviving mood, you know, in my right. life. But even if we are looking at this, how the, sh <coughs> the parents should raise their kids, what we are going to say, some, some of my friends, they are like, oh, I never really get love. What is love, actually? You know, what means love? Mm. Because Americans, they don't even hit the kid, right? Right. But it can actually happen from, from protection. <laughs> because with the hit, it's, of course, it doesn't make feel good the parents to hit the kid right. but sometimes the kid has to be hidden because that point it's gonna understand that it's wrong for you right you have to learn it that next time you're not going to hurt yourself you right know? so i mean it's just a different mindset of course you know, it, of course Europe. it is because you even have that here you got people who are still willing to do little little hits little pow pows you know whatever yes. you want to call it and then you got people who are completely against it who yes. think that that's the most unnecessary thing yes. and, and so on and so forth. And truth be told that the results go different ways. Sometimes you do have that. And, and I'm going to say that my niece, I'm not trying to be biased. My niece is one of them. She, she never got her hand, hands put on her, you know, but my brother is, is cutthroat straight to it, talks to her like a little woman. And he's been doing that since she was five. All of us are, you know, very straightforward. We don't need to sugarcoat shit. We need to get her ready for how life really is, you know, yes. going back to what your dad was doing. Her mom's a little bit different. She's more on the uh, very sweet, oh, my little baby, whatever. But she's, she's thus far, she's 15, thus far she's been, a, she's been great. She's been awesome. But a lot of times when you don't put some type of real extra on these kids, they shit on you. They're not fearing anything. The comfort exactly. zone is too, is too comfortable. I agree. And therefore, they don't make the best decisions because they're not yes. fearing repercussion. And it doesn't have to be an ass whooping. But if you're not handing out ass whoopings, you probably aren't being tough enough 
on other shit too yes. you know um exactly. yes we were also very controlled so on the farm we had to work taking care of the animals so in the early morning when we wake up that was the first animals feed them drink everything that gave you responsibility right exactly there. Yeah, and uh, yeah, responsibility. It taught you responsibility, exactly. yeah. Exactly. Accountability. And it was a hard work. Like, you know, we have four seasons. Sometimes was really cold, minus Celsius outside Shit. in the early morning, like 5 p.m. You go out, you know, it's, 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 you were all the time almost out of your comfort zone. And uh, then after, uh, we had the morning training, go to school, back, you know. So almost we did the same thing how dad was, right. you know, right. growing up. But I think that's the right thing. Now we have we we learned appreciate things too, and I also learned that if I want to get something, I have to earn it. Right. I always ha he teached us how to earn things, and also he never let us to go party, to hanging out. Da, da, da. He was always focusing on wasting your time. You know, and I was like always arguing with him. Why? Why I can't go out with my friends? All of them are allowed to go out. I said okay they can come here mm. to our house and it was like yeah if they were gonna show up in our house probably they ne never gonna be a friend with me because that is so scary <laughs> <laughs> they were intimidated by the whole yeah that is very cultural because he always like oh nice to meet you my 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 son or you know my daughter okay and what are you doing like what is your hobby don't you think you have to do some sport he starts and, digging in on them and yeah. i'm like oh my god dad please stop <laughs> you know and they were so scared of my dad you know sometimes they always made a bath like uh if i was able to join the the summer vacation with the class you know uh -huh. and they were betting like oh i think francesca can't come again because she has to train or whatever you know but you but know they, but they also saw the badass that you became because you started competing i didn't understand this back then and then i was arguing with my dad i was very brave even though i know i'm gonna get a couple slept but i was able to fight with him you know so uh my dad said like look my daughter you may hate me now but one day you're going to appreciate it that's right and one day you're going to understand it so he didn't care if by that time I really I didn't hate him. I, of course I love him. Right. But there was anger in me. Of course. And he was like, he doesn't care, but he knows as a dad he has to protect me, and he did. How early were you competing right away as a young? Because I, I remember you posted a picture not that long ago, and it seemed like you already competed, and you were like five or six. Yes. So you were already five. competing young. Yes. And competition went all the way throughout your high school years yes and yes. even slightly past it yeah I, I, I'm, I'm i can tell that i grew up on the mat because when i was like five years old my dad was bringing me to his training and i was just you know right, like on the mats, running yeah. on the mats he sometimes was rolling even his friends was rolling me you know a little bit so it was it was natural for right. me to be around him while he's on the mat he was taking me to the competition but even when i was a baby like I said, he's a very good horse rider. He he wanted that his daughter's more horse riding instead combat sport, mm -hmm. um, but it just was in my in my blood. Yeah. It is, so that that's not something you you, you followed. Instead, you went all kind of other routes. So we were we were talking off camera, and you said you know you did this judo route as far basically as far as you can take it. The only other step could have been had you made the actual Olympic team. At that point, you, just, you you correct me if I'm wrong. You decided to start flirting with, or were you doing it towards the end of your judo career? Is this when you started getting into bodybuilding? Yes, basically. Tor okay, yes, yes. yes, because I still wanted competing. Exactly. You know, but I uh, I was very disappointed when I when I stopped doing judo because I had many surgeries, and I felt that if if I'm keep getting injured. It's, it's 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 a signs that I have to go a different direction. I didn't know yet what it is, but I was definitely about to finding it. I tried to go this way, this way, this way. I just always felt that I I have to improve. So I didn't want to stop to improve in any aspect of my life because that's what why we were born here. You know, all of us has a mission and become the best version of ourselves. That's my belief. That's awesome, right. And if I feel that there is no purpose for my life, especially in my 26th, I, I will go crazy. I would feel like I'm failed. 
and just because the surgery is hold me back to to uh, accomplish my dream which was obviously the olympic games i will say okay maybe i am failed as a judo fighter but i'm not going to fail in in my under there uh direction in my life which i'm going to pick so when you did the bodybuilding you were at some point getting ready to compete did you start doing the wrestling yet could you started learning some freestyle wrestling or some greco was that during the uh, the bodybuilding preparation or not quite yet yeah so i did some freestyle wrestling when i was 21 mm -hmm. because i get sometimes some break from judo and my my dad didn't want me to be around the mess so i was joining the wrestling training camp <laughs> i just love fighting the mats, yeah. i love i love of course, the mats, of course. and it's i feel guilty so then i i and back then i had um um a wrestling boyfriend mm -hmm. too so i was able to learn from them a lot and uh, yeah so when i was 26 i retired from judo um the part of it was also because my dad got stroke and I was like, I didn't really earn money at all from judo. So I was like, uh, I have to find some job. And when I graduated uh, with this, from sport education, the, the, to teaching sport in school, it didn't pay well. Now it, was, it doesn't pay either well, but it was like, seems like $500 a month. Wow. You have to go there in the morning, you know, and I was like, I don't want to be enough even just for me, you know, not like helping out the family. So when I was 26, after the Olympic Games, I didn't have the qualifications. I went to Germany and I was working there a year as a, as a waitress. And I was sending home all my money, but I realized it's yet not enough. We are five kids, you know, we have a farm and... Uh, that wasn't really, he, he was in very bad condition. So um, I was like, I have to figure out something else. And there were lots of, uh, I had a huge fan base from judo. Okay. And they told me like, hey, why don't you do like, like wrestling with fans and they, and they would pay for it, you know? And I was like, oh, what is this exactly? And they started showing me like, there are certain websites, you can advertise yourself. And I was like, I was talking with my boyfriend and I was like, it looks a little bit, like a little bit like a fetish like these people actually like to get beaten up right you know I, well one can say it's it's a slight fetish but the only the only i guess the bad part is that when you attach that word fetish to it you start thinking sexual shit you know because yes, that's that, know. that's it's just it's just co connected to it is i i, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. guess it's maybe it's supposed to maybe it's not but it is considered some type of fetish but not in a sexual way these guys are just you know first of all they're a fan of yours they like your they're work fan, yes. they, they like your work and you know, maybe they're into judo or wrestling as yeah. well. And therefore, it's like, yo, you know, if this woman's down to do it, I'll pay her to come whoop my ass. I want to see how good she is in yes, real life. Exactly. I've been following her throughout her whole career, and I know who she is, and, yes. and she's strong. I'm pretty sure she can put it on me. I get it. I, I get it. So you so you, you stumbled upon this this yeah, new yeah, yeah, yeah. journey here, right? Yes, yeah. so I started advertising myself. Like, I have a judo wrestling skill, you know. Uh, I try to bring more, like, uh, I started actually that point to do a little bodybuilding okay you know that i bring a stronger shape because people especially men are visual you know mm -hmm. if they see that you're a bigger and very muscular they connecting with that like oh she must be very strong you know right and it's it's actually genetic too like not every woman like super buff but can be really very strong you right, know right so um i was building up my website my everything you know and I, and I was traveling all around Europe and started building up a really huge fan base because I went to London, to Manchester, <coughs> many, many like wrestling shows. And sometimes and there was uh, people who was involved pro wrestling. And I really liked it. I was like, oh, this is a cool shit, you know? Right. And I was like, I would like to do that. So they started teaching me some, thing, that some things. And then I well, started advertising myself. Like, actually, I'm studying some pro wrestling thing, you know? So I also, we can do that kind of uh, session to... Right, right. Like that wrestling, role playing, whatever. Yeah, role play. Yes, uh -huh. exactly. And uh, I, was, I was looking after that which school I should join that I become a pro wrestler. And they said it doesn't really pay well in Europe and basically just in 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 London or in Manchester. 
and it's 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 more in the United States, you know. So I was like, okay, if I want to build more, right. I have to sooner or later to go to the states. But I wasn't sure if they actually knowing about me, you know. So I made a couple trip in United States till. I started building up my fan base, you know. I, I I made the connection with so many pro wrestling coaches, you know, and I was like, I want to do this. And uh, two and a half years ago, I was like, okay, I think I'm ready to to move to the states. Um, I just recently le- left um, a sport reality show in Hungary, so I just turned to be a um, a celebrity in Hungary, and I felt like like this was the my that that made really difficult to make the right decision mm-hmm. if I want to keep my career in Hungary or I want to go to chasing my dream in United States do, do you think it'll hurt you if you chase not that you would fail or anything over here but let's say you stayed here five years eight years ten years whatever you do what you do whatever it is you think that'll hurt you going back to Hungary because they're gonna be like nah you left us are they like that um, don't you don't think it'll build your value I would say I still have uh um I'm how to say uh a little bit I have a unique character, you know. Right. Which is not really easy to find anywhere, you know. Mm. I already proved myself in the T V. Uh the people really loved me, thankfully. Um I would say I already earned something in Hungary and even after a couple of years if I will, I will fail in United States. I had a feeling I still can come back, you know. So, um, but now I was like, I have to take a risk because I wanna create bigger. Like Hungary is great, but if you take the opportunity in Hungary, it's just over there. If you take the opportunity in United States, actually you take over the whole world. Right. 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 So I was like, I want something bigger. And I want something crazy. I just, I was like, it's going to suit more my personality and my lifestyle. So I was like, maybe pro wrestling also because I I just uh, mentioned you the many surgeries. I thought that that was it. No more martial arts, even though I was missing it. I was like, that was the end. But I still wanted to get stuck something about the, the wrestling stuff, you know. Right, right. So, um. In Las Vegas, I started joining a few pro wrestling shows. Da, da, da. So I, I started improving. I did also a couple bodybuilding uh, competition because my another goal was to get the pro card, which never happened. So I was like, oh, okay, fuck this. <laughs> it's, it's maybe not for me. Let's talk with the pro wrestling. And then Power Slab reached out to me. And I was like, maybe this is was the thing what I felt in Hungary because I always felt like I have to come to United States for some reason. And I didn't know. I thought it's maybe pro wrestling, you know. And it was like, for some reason, I have to come here. But back then, wasn't even the plan, the power slap, you know. So I didn't know what I'm actually coming here for, but I had to trust my gut. So when I got here... I you, 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 you came here for opportunity. For opportunity you're, too, you're, yes. you're you're an opportunist, but I felt that and, I'm going to create something right, and, and you are. Well, creating it, and you know, some creating it doesn't always have to be like you literally, you know, make put all you making these decisions and bringing your ass over here and taking this chance and and willing to go to Vegas or you, you said Arizona yes. and then Vegas now Miami. You know, this is all I you mean, building it. You're, you're you're doing it. You know, it's happening. Bit I believe by that. Bit. I believe that we creating our own opportunities too. Mm. Sometimes I also feel <sighs> that we get a little uh, guidance too. I, I get I you. Can, I, I get can you. feel that too. Yeah. Like it's it's a combination it. of it. Mm-hmm. You know, but you have to keep chasing. It doesn't come to you if you just you have just a faith. It's not enough. Right. You know, people always like, oh, I manifest, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but <laughs> bro, like, you still have to work hard for it, you know. You have to get through on fucking challenges, you know. It, it, it didn't come really easy, this opportunity for me. And then when I get it, people are judging it. Okay, they judge power slap, whatever. But if you don't know why those people are there, and I believe most of them has a story, 
And in this case, if people are paying attention, actually a little bit of time to see that what is my background and how long the journey was that I can get here, then in my perspective, it's a huge blessing to be a power slave fighter. But obviously, it's not the highlight in my life. I still want to prove not only for the people, but for myself and for my dad that there is a lot more in me. And power slap also helped me to to um, um, realize that uh, it's not the end of my career because since it runs under the UFC, I was like, there are lots of fighters who they are on their 40s. So I still have time. And I was like, I already made this huge journey i think let's unlock my biggest potential and become an mma fighter mission pt rehab and recovery is your one-stop shop for all physical therapy and wellness needs our licensed physical therapists provide customized hands-on treatments for all sports injuries accidents workers comp and more no doctor prescriptions required for the first 30 days mission pt has one-on-one -on -one personal training for sports specific needs as well as general weight loss and strengthening we are conveniently located steps from dayland mall Call today for your free 30-minute consult, 786-409-5589. That's 786-409-5589. Mission PT, perform at your best. Okay, so I definitely want to talk about this, this power slap experience because, I mean, for one, one of the most viral videos, I don't want to say ever, but you, we talked about it. It's at 80 million. 80 million. Oh. 87 now, I don't know. 80-something million. Guys, go look it up. Show your love, show some support, and see just how beastly this woman is and, and what occurred. So, first off, you've done an exhibition slap before, over a year and a half ago. You remember that, that, that and, and even though you won, you learned from it, right? You, you, you said that this viciousness didn't come out of you like, like you knew you had in you throughout all these years of martial arts and training and so on and so forth and uh, tough upbringings, certain past relationships, everything has helped you become this strong, tough chick and you're still literally trying to put it all together. So you get this second opportunity, here you are, and you said that the first time in the exhibition fight, you went first a year and a half ago. And you remember that you didn't have that, uh, that you know, you weren't mad. No, no she hit me first. On, in the exhibition one? Yes, exhibition one. Okay. And now in this one. I had to go first. You had to go first. But you weren't mad yet. It wasn't there yet. Yes. So my mom, people always see my violent side, you know. But actually, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm a very sensitive person. Okay. Or I was, sort of, in my, in my, in my life. But the life really teach me so hard to bring out the best from my mm -hmm. from me and yeah the big part of it was my past relationship i was years in a in a very 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 abusive relationship toxic abusive yes yes yeah, and uh, so there i got multiple times beaten up really roughly and uh I realized when when it's a rough way to find out how strong you are. Sorry, sorry to hear that, but it's it's now I'm healed. So I was working on myself a lot. That's why I can talk about it. Okay, good. and I can help so many friends That's around awesome. me. That's awesome. Yes, so um, I just realized that sooner or later, when you are getting same punishment for no reason over and over again, something is activated in me, and I was like. I just can't take this no more. I just can't, like, I had to protect myself. And and I felt that because my loving one, I don't want to hit with a fist for my protection because it kind of felt like I can really damage him, even though he was uh, he was strong and skilled and blah, blah. But so I was, for the protection to put him down on me, I was giving a slap and he falling down and, he didn't get knocked out, but... You realized you had some power on you. There, I got, and he got shocked, too. He was shocked first, and he, like, out of mind, and he's now going to kill me, and then just was on the floor, and they kicked him back. Like, I was like, just fucking stop this shit, you know? And uh, 
I remember when I realized that what strength I have, I was like, it's out of human. And I was smaller back then. I was like 31, 35 pounds. It was before bodybuilding. Mm. And I was like, if I knew that this <laughs> strength inside me, right, how to channel I it. would be like a two times Olympic champion. But I was like, what is this? I really felt like not being a human. And later, I get not only by him, but by others, not relationship, but the life broke me some situations where I kind of get activated this surviving mood. And I realized that this lives in me. Mm. And I was like, that's interesting. And now, sometimes I kind of can switch it on and off if I need it. If I feel like there is some upcoming... Um, some situation that requires... Yes, like it's like I may have to be ready. Right. I kind of can activate it. Okay. You know? But to hurt someone in purpose, it's just not my thing. Like, I, I don't actually, I want to help people. I really love helping them. I like to give some good advices, which from my life, past life experiences or something, mm. you know. Um, but to, to hurt them, it's, it's one of the biggest challenge for me, you know. So that's what I'm saying, like, power slap, okay. I was like, it's going to be hard because you have to hurt someone in purpose. But I was seeking for opportunity. So I, I would say not really the opponent is the biggest challenge for me. It's you, myself. Right. Myself. And <laughs> so always my friends and family were my weakness because they always want to help them. That's why I told you, like, I started taking responsibility over my family when my father get stroke now in the first exhibition fight i had to face with one of my best friends with kearney also oh. who when i moved to las vegas i couldn't sign up yet for apartment nothing and she was i lived in her apartment for a month you know same she, chick that you had the slap on the first exhibition one. yes she helped me to actually start my journey and she gave me the connection for pro wrestling and everything how was that conversation before you actually Hey, it's time to slap each other, girl. <laughs> was very you know? awkward. We love each other. We met before. We but but, like, but how long were you guys quiet without saying a word to each other before the before? actual slap? Like no, an hour, never, half an hour? Or was oh. right away? A couple minutes, last few words, let's go handle business. So we met, I think, in, if I could remember, we met still in the hotel in the morning for breakfast. She was with her husband there. We just said hi. It was a bit awkward smile because we already were in... Mm -hmm, focus, know. right, of course. So, yeah, I was like... And I think we also tried to avoid each other because it was awkward, you know. Mm -hmm. But we were in messaging back and forth a day before and uh, I told... I think I also told her, like, I don't know what to expect from myself. That's why I don't want to promise you anything because I told her, like... I told her, I'm here. I was seeking for this opportunity and I was like, <clears throat> not for me, but I can do this with my family that I'm not going to take this chance right. and providing them a bit better life, you know, mm -hmm. because then started actually the Ukrainian war too and everything. Mm -hmm. And it was just hard. So I was going for my family too. If it would be about for my s or for me, I sacrificed many times, many opportunities if it was about me. Right. Even on the Hungarian TV show, I was giving my medal. For so, my so, so in other words, you, you even contemplate in like then, this is kind of like a friend that normally if, if life was different, maybe I would avoid this. But because I'm fighting for my family and I'm trying yes. to, you know, bring some money back home and make yes. moves for myself, I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to take this opportunity yes. and I'm going to slap exactly. this girl and do what I got to do. Yes. I, and I, and I, I was, I told her. Respected, so, man. I mean, it's, it's. So, um, so she slapped me first and honestly, I was praying to God that she slapped me first. Because it would be very hard for me to hurt my friend, in purpose, right, you know. Right. But if she slapped me first, I would like, okay, now it's just like my turn, and then we are equal, like wah wah, you mm -hmm. know. So she slapped me first, and then, oh my god, I, I was kind of freeze. I barely remember the whole thing because I was somewhere else, and then because it was a trigger for me, that's why I was able to to bring 
I don't know. Yeah. Not hundred percent, but maybe two hundred percent. Right. You know, she years of, of yeah. yes. So now when I got the Christine, my my new opponent, mm. just my mom wrote me the message. Please just don't feel sorry to her. Because your mom knows. My mom knows me. She knows. She knows it's my it's my hardest. Baby, sport. I need I need you to get tunnel vision. I need you to go evil. You can't think with a good I heart know. for this. And you I know? was like, yes, I'm going to, I'm going to, and even I was like, now I will be able. And when I slap her first, yeah, she, I was like, why well, she's not laying on the floor? She's supposed to be there, right? And I was like, ah, damn, because it didn't. There was natural holding back a little bit, you mm. know. And then I was like. No, I already know she's going to hit me. It's gonna trigger me, and I'm gonna knock her out. So I already know. After when I you were very you were very confident that no matter how hard she comes back, she doesn't have enough in oh, her. Oh, I know that I can get in this way. No, you you, you you really felt that. Yes. Wow. That's why. And then you had the famous kiss, kiss blow. Because it's so you took the hit, and what what happened? Like, try, walk us through that. This this first of all. You're staring at this girl. You're seeing her wind up. They're, they're, the only only people who compete in power slap can talk about this type of experience. Who the hell sits there and allows somebody to just cock back and slap them while they look at them? Maybe jackass, you know, those people back in the days. So what's going through your mind as you're looking at her just cocking back? Here comes one warm-up. Here comes a second warm-up. Are you thinking anything? Are you just... Did your mind shut off? Like, you know what? I'm going to take this. It's all good. I've already been there. Come on, bitch. Bring it. Like, what, what's going through your head? Yeah. So there was, I was like, okay, now her turn. I liked that actually. She picked up a little bit the character. So I felt like less guilty, you know? And she's experienced. That was also made me feel great. Like, she already done a few powers, like, a few slapping competitions. Okay. But anyway, after when I was like, okay, now. I was ready for my trigger, I would say. So I already know how I'm work, you know, how my body work mm -hmm. and everything. And I was like, okay. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> you're not going to knock me out. For sure, like, forget this, you know. So I don't know. It, it happened quick when she slapped me. So when she slapped me, I was like, mm, okay, the month card, still in my things. Okay, I'm still grounding. Everything is ready. I was like, was a good one, but now it's my turn. <laughs> Basically, it was like that. So that's what you thought in your head when you blew the kiss. You thought, ah, oh, that was a good one. You yeah. weren't, you were. It wasn't like to tease her, like that wasn't shit. It was more like it just came out, and you actually like, oh, that was good. I felt that. That's more like that. No. So it was like I felt that, yeah, and then I was like, now my turn, something like that. Right. I was like, now I'm gonna knock the shit out of you. And that's the kiss it. was more that. And I think you only wound, you only cocked back twice, right? It was the second cock back. You went, you loaded up once. You came back. You loaded up a second time. I need for measuring the first one. Uh -huh. So I go for the second. Yes. And that was it. You know, and you know what's the the, the most cold blooded part about it? After you did it, you just sat there looking straight down at her, like, like you knew you sent her to the outer world. Like, you didn't smile, you didn't celebrate, you didn't, fuck yeah, I'm moving no, on. Uh, you just looked at her like, I handled my business. <laughs> yes. That's, that's, that was that was your people, character. People ask, I, wa I wasn't acting there. No, I know that. I, was, I know. No, I, I, I heard her, but until the ref, so that's the other thing what that teaches me. Until the referee doesn't put your hands mm -hmm. up or makes you like you are the, you, you are the victory, mm -hmm. you didn't win. They can change the rule. That we are not celebrating before we leave the mat. You know, we are not celebrating. Plus, I'm, I was hurting her. So I'm like, I'm not going to be after that. Like, right, right. <laughs> it's, it's, well, some people do, but yeah. I know, it's you know. okay. That's the, uh, it's not me. I don't feel comfortable with it. I was there. Somebody got knocked out by a hit. It. it it's 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 a huge pain. Of course, I can cause damage. Right, right. I'm not going to celebrating that there. Why she's suffering on the floor? Mm. I was like, I I made my job. Let's see if it was enough. If she's getting up, I'm like, I got to do again, you know. And I was like, Are you getting up or not? So I just was waiting. And then, when the referee said like, Okay, it's done. 
I was looking up. I was like, okay, I accomplished. So what's what what comes next after this? Obviously, you want to do another power slap, and I, and I know we're gonna get the, to talking about the fight. You know, we we're trying to get you your first fight, but are you just on speed dial for somebody who's in charge of power slap, and they're gonna reach out? Hey, Francesca, we're we're gonna we're looking to do another one in February. You know, something like that. You're just on call for that. You just gotta wait. Nothing else. I don't know. But you're allowed to do next. your you're allowed to do your own thing outside of that, right? Any kind yes. of fight, any kind of anything. Yes. So okay. I don't know when is the next power slap, but I try to focus on my weight cut, not to cut weight. I was cutting so much weight for that, almost twenty eight pounds. What was the weight? I didn't even know that they I were. Cutting I was like one forty six. For the for the fight for the slap, mm -hmm. and what what do you walk around at right now? Uh, now I'm like 163 maybe, but back then I started from 172. Wow. <laughs> and I'm not eating like so much junk and stuff, but I feel I feel that I'm 30 and my body just works different, mm -hmm. you know. So that was one of the hardest part. And and that actually also motivated me that I'm not going to let this this victory go because I was suffering so much with right. this weight cut, you know. Right. Um, and 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 you know wanting to go into MMA now, I would, me personally, I think you'd think the same way. My jaw just fucking took that slap. Unfortunately, what you've been through in the past with the the, the relationships, the toxic relationships, and then of course, you, you you know you you had nine surgeries because you've been slammed on your shit so much throughout your life through judo. Yeah. So you're built fucking forward tough, okay? Like you yeah. you're you're and, and your jawline is stronger than normal and everything else. So Going into uh, MMA, I would be a little like, okay, this is a good thing to have because you never know how good your jaw is. You know how how well can you take a hit? And here, you know, <laughs> you there's no other test to take. You pass them all. You got a fucking you got a tough jaw. You can take a hit, and you got black belt in judo, and you're working at well. Let's talk about it. MMA masters. You know, uh, a great gym, two uh, two amazing coaches over there, Caesar. And uh, Daniel Valverde, Daniel Valverde on more on the jiu-jitsu side, Caesar on the uh, the striking side. They're both great guys. They're very well known in Miami. I know both of them really well. I know uh, uh, Daniel was one of my first jiu-jitsu coaches way back in the days. He remembers, and uh, it's great to see how successful they are. They got a lot of guys in the UFC and fighting around different things. So you definitely got an amazing team behind you. Um, you said you had a few girls already drop out, and I told you get ready. That's going to happen a lot. I know that's frustrating. That's frustrating. You're gonna have to call some bitches out. Like you're literally gonna have to poke at the bear, whoever it is. You know, it sucks, but this is what's gonna happen. No one's gonna want to fight you. You're too much of a fucking badass. So you're gonna have to call some names out. What are they telling you? I well, think I mean, it's going to happen at the right time. Okay. Anyway, I keep doing my training. Right. Also, I'm preparing for the next upcoming event. Um, I got invitation for for bare knuckle. Okay. Which is surprising me because I started kickbox at the striking this March, you know? Right. And I was like, hmm, I like the challenges, you know? Going You're an opportunist. In the yes. Which is, is it, it, sending the, the bar, sending the strikers to the judo world championship. Like, it's kind of like that. Right, you know? right, right. For me. Right. If in other words, completely expert. opposite of your expertise is what yeah, you're yeah, saying. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I was like, I know I'm punching hard, so I know once it hit in, is it can be really, really, very tough. And I was like, how many times I can get triggered in the Bernacle fight? <laughs> Think about it, though. It's true. I mean, it's, I was it's, thinking, what is this going to bring out from me? I'm just, I don't want to be like wrong, you know. I just was thinking that why is this coming to 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 as an opportunity? But I also have to be smart about like not right right of it jumping in you know right, right because i have to i would like to prepare i was talking of that with my coach too like minimum like two months that just focusing on that boxing on that, on that exactly. clinch boxing what yes, they do yes because of the reflex uh, yeah i agree thing, you know of course now i'm training mme but my focus is about how as soon as possible i take them down right you know but now there's no takedowns mm -hmm. i have only striking and my but you know, who, who, I think Francis started really on his. Ninganu yeah. started super late. Right. Super late. Yes. There are so many great examples. Right. And look what he did now with Tyson. Exactly. Like, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like 
there's nothing impossible. But the other thing, and that actually Khabib said, you have to be hungry for the fight. You know? So as long as I'm hungry for the fight and and you just have to have find the right timing to, to compete in a different sport, which is not your strength. Right. right. I, I, I I think I'm saying the line correctly. Um luck is when opportunity meets preparation. So if you're consistently preparing for a, a, a plethora of, ch of challenges that can come up to you physically because you work out, you do jitsu, you do MMA, you do striking, you do wrestling, you do it all. Now you have the preparation part in process. It's always there. You're always exactly. fit. Like yes. you said, if you were to take the uh, BKFC fight, now it's time to direct just straight boxing. But yes. for now, you're doing all the preparation. On top of that, you're an opportunist and you're, and you're, you're, you're helping these opportunities come to light because you're fucking with the right people and you're surrounding yourself with the right energies and you're exactly. making you're making good decisions yes. and you're grinding and you know and you're in your head you're like all right oh i did power slap all right viral video 80 something million ain't done i'm not done what's next yes let's go. absolutely not done let's no, go no, no, no. bring it on let's keep going you know i think that's that's awesome that's i was awesome. also thinking of the barnacle like if i'm going to if i would uh, accept the invitation and preparing for that it's going to raise up because I'm forcing myself to be a better boxer, right? And imagining the knowledge what I'm going to get and the experience, what level it's going to bring me in MMA. Maybe that's what's going to actually prepare for me for the UFC or PFL. Right. You understand? Right. I yeah. was like, for some reason, those <clears throat> are showing up. Power slap, when I get power slap, I get hungry for MMA. Mm -hmm. I started training MMA. I had no striking background. I get BKFC uh, opportunity. I was like, okay, maybe I have to really focus in more on striking, and it's going to make me complete. Right. But it's it's not months, you know. It's not months. It can be years. But but the but the the how to say the highlight going to be really, right. Really, really, really. It's gonna high. be dope, right? When, yeah. when you get there, exactly. Like around, look, around the achieved so many things, but. The problem, if she failed, I I saw I, I maybe I'm wrong, but she kind of disappeared for for big time. Right? Yeah, she she totally took herself off the face of the earth after she lost twice. Yes, because it's it's hard for facing us failing. But me, I don't even if I lose, I don't feel that I lost because I know by that time, I put my my hundred percent in it, mm. and and. So my spirit never fails. Right. You know, maybe the decision, it, the decision was for the others. Right. But my spirit was there. And it's, yeah, I'm, fa I'm, failure I'm always is, improving. You fa know? Exactly. Failure is when you didn't learn anything from the situation. Failure is not a loss. It's not a loss. A loss is a loss. Absolutely but you, you not. learned, you grew, you continue yes. growing, so on and so that no one, you didn't fail. Exactly. You didn't fail. You just yeah, didn't yeah, get yeah. the win. So, yeah. So, that's, that's why I have no fear, you awesome. know? Right. Because so many competitors, they are they have a fear by losing. Mm -hmm. And it's also not good, right? Because they are already thinking of the negative part. But in my opinion, it's like there's no losing, you know? As long as... And I also, the other thing, I'm not going actually just for the victory. I'm... I, for me, the most, the best part, the journey to get there, right. you know, and I want to enjoy the competition. Right. And I also want that my opponent bringing her best because I, I also don't want that she's using excuses. I never want to use excuses, mm. you know, and just bring our best and be like a two warriors and, and, and uh, showing like, uh, like uh, inspiring the world, you know. I, I agree with you 100%. Unfortunately, too many fighters don't do that. They don't think like that. I think they should. They put too much emphasis on the win, on the on the record. Yes. Versus, first of all, there's people, only... People there's, there, anyway, there, they're there, liking you because of your character. Yeah, and not only that, there, there's only... There's only one Michael Jordan, one Kobe Bryant. There's only one Habib, you know, yes. Nurmagomedov. There's only one John Jones. Can there be other people who are just so amazing like them who, who kick almost everybody's ass and never take a loss? It's possible, but guess what? Everybody's a different ninja nowadays. Every one of these fighters are becoming more and more badass 
and they're starting way young. Look at you, five years old, your first competition in judo. What the fuck? Who does that? You know. Yeah. So it, it's the whole game is changing. It's not about being that that untouchable fighter. You got to enjoy this this journey. There's a lot that happens in between, in during, before, and after, and there's so many wins in all that. You know that this. Yes. Um, I think Power Slap is in Vegas, right? Or is it no? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's say it's somewhere else. Win or lose, we're going for the W. But win or lose, guess what? You're, you're going to go to Africa for the next Power Slap. Enjoy that journey. Enjoy that yes. adventure, you know, and, and seek more opportunities during this adventure. Don't be so hung on just getting that W and, like, it's going to determine what happens next in life, you know? Yes. I, I think that's an amazing way of doing that. And this is why you say you like to give advice. That's good. You, mm -hmm. You've been through a lot. You've been through a lot, and it may maybe you don't talk about it enough. Maybe you, you know, um, people who have been hurt and who've been through rough times and who started at the bottom, and and you know, I think most of them don't talk about it too much. They they know what they've been through. When mm. they talk about it, it's kind of because kinda, they didn't recover yet. That's a great point too. That definitely could be a, one of the one I of had the reasons. to work on myself that my past doesn't pull me back. Right, because so many people they just try to avoiding the triggers. Me, I'm I'm using my trigger as a tool to catapult you. Yes. yes, yes, yes. That's that's a great way of looking at it as well. Yeah. Um, but you know, tough lives, tough lives, tough lives, or tough living. There's this great quality, this great character that it brings, it builds in somebody. It can go either way. It yes. can go fucking bad because if you didn't recover, and, and you and you didn't uh, address this and understand that you have you know this trigger and, and how to how to control it then you can carry that on into future relationships you can carry this chip on your shoulder and not progress in the way you're going right now with such determination or you can be the opposite so it can it can do both but a tough upbringing can make the strongest most awesome people in my opinion and i, I love to hear stories like this where you know you overcome all that and here you are just searching for the next challenge like come on you know bring it me I, I wouldn't change anything i wouldn't change anything uh i wouldn't want to born in a rich family in a spoiled life you know because otherwise i may not see the world from this perspective as i experienced and it's still the struggles are also beautiful right and i think we need that and that's why i'm always trying to be out of my comfort zone because that's what actually makes me makes me tough, you know. So now I'm also looking how can I get out from it. I, I remember um, there was this book that I read. I think it was either 33 Strategies of War or same, same author or 48 Laws of Power. It's Robert Greene. It was one of those books. And uh, he was reciting Napoleon Bonaparte, which he has a, there's an amazing movie coming up with uh, jo Joaquin, whatever his name is. And it's about Napoleon. It looks phenomenal. Napoleon, they chased they chase this this uh you call a small army, okay? A thousand guys went to the left and a hundred guys went to the right. And the scout comes back to the Napoleon and goes, you know, uh, Captain Admiral, whatever, sir, we have a thousand guys over here and we have a hundred over here. Let's just go over here and, and whoop these guys' asses real quick, tear that hundred up real quick, because it was ten thousand of Napoleon. You know, let's just go kill these hundred real quick and then we'll go around the mountains and we'll chase the other thousand. And Napoleon said, no, 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 no. Let's go fight that thousand first. And the guy was confused. He's like, but sir, there's 10,000 of us. There's a hundred guys. They don't stand a chance. Yeah, we're going to kill these thousand over here, but they have a small chance to hurt us because there's a thousand of them. Napoleon says, the last thing you want to do is go against a creature with his back against the wall. Those hundred guys, they know they don't. They, there's not a chance in hell that they're going to survive because there's ten thousand of us. So they're going to bring the dirtiest, nastiest. I'm killing everybody with me. Approach to this last fight of theirs, this last stand. That's the scariest person you exactly. want to go against. Somebody whose backs have against the wall, nothing to lose, and everything to gain. They bring out everything and exactly, and especially if that person's been through anything in life. All that, like you said, that triggers, time to turn that on. Exactly. He says those other thousand, they're going to spread out. Some are going to run. Some are going to try to escape. Some think that they can get lost. You know, no, no, no. That's easy pickings. These guys are going to fight to the death, and exactly. that's scary. And it makes sense, and that's why, you know, going back to what you said, when your back is against the wall, some of us, you and I, 
It brings the best out of us. Exactly. It brings the best out of us. Mission PT Rehab and Recovery is your one-stop shop for all physical therapy and wellness needs. Our licensed physical therapists provide customized hands-on treatments for all sports injuries, accidents, workers' comp, and more. No doctor prescriptions required for the first 30 days. Mission PT has one-on-one -on -one personal training for sports-specific needs, as well as general weight loss and strengthening. We are conveniently located steps from Dayland Mall. Call today for your free 30-minute consult, 786-409-5589. That's 786-409-5589. Mission PT, perform at your best. Well, throughout all this you know, adventurous life that you have, you definitely have, have built yourself up into a... a, a amazing person in different ways and you still got so much to do so much more building to do but you you literally have built this character you have this character you have this i mean you have a website that that kind of flows with the, with the character and and i have to pick your, your brain apart a little bit because i know there's some wild ones out there so first of all your, your website is sheena s-h-e-e-n-a yes wrestler.com okay so sheena wrestler.com so now if somebody wanted to I don't want to say get their ass beat, but somebody, there, there's different type of bookings. You, you can elaborate yes, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. So, but I'm different. selecting. <laughs> right. And so they get to request some type of wrestling ordeal with you through the website, and then you choose whether or not you want to do yes, it, right? Yes, exactly. Do you look these guys up on their Instagram, see how you know off it's they usually, might be or something? Uh, no, usually they don't really want to show up. Their, um, their public side. Yeah, 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 because they kind of feel guilty about that. They right. think like, oh, it's kind of weird, you know, to get kicked my ass by a chick, you know. <laughs> but some of them, like, proud of it, you know, like, it has nothing to hide. It's depend <laughs> of the level, like, like what kind of uh, beaten up he want to get. Right. You know. Right. How Be physical they want you to or, get. Or because there are, there are multiple type of sessions, too. So somebody just like to be carried. You know, lifting carry <laughs> session. So obviously, he's not going to be proud of it. You know, like he just likes to be carried by a strong woman. This is fucking wild. You know, you, you know, you know what furries are. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. furries? Furries. Yes, the the those are people with with uh, fetishes where they like to dress up as um furry type animals. Could be a bear, a cat, oh, a fucking like, that. like they put on these and they, and they act like some type of animal. Okay, even mm -hmm. if it's a. a of fantasy type animal they dress up as animals of some sort they try to say it's not about sexual stuff it's just their thing you know whatever you want to call it their fetish but most of it leads to some sexual stuff it's just wild to me it's wild these these fetishes that people have and then hearing what you just said like this <laughs> this guy likes to be carried you know i wonder like uh, everything has is, also something like coming from the childhood because course, i was talking with them course. that's a good thing i actually learned a lot from people and from men right because those are things they don't really want to share with anyone sometimes not even you became really you become like a little therapist almost on the yes side. yes i learned a lot and and they're sharing with me so and i appreciate that and all of us has something not normal things in right. our life you don't know so we have to accept it have to be very open with them and uh, but besides this most of them really amazing people and they're struggling with this little fetish, you know. Right. It comes from the childhood. For example, there was a dude, he, I was like, okay, why you like that a strong chick beat you up? Because my mom's best friend, she was a tennis player. She always was wearing this skirt, the satin skirt, and she was always coming around. And she told me like, hey, if you won't be a good boy, I'm going to choke you, you know, something like that. And the kid was like, my God, does she going to choke me? Da, she da, was da. mesmerized by it. Yes, and and he was like, I don't know, seven, nine, nine years old. And later he actually liked the idea. Of course, I wanna be choked by a fit chick in a. But he, but he didn't, but he didn't say that he got I'm, this person you're talking about. He didn't get molested or or, or that lady didn't no, no, actually no, no. take no. But no, he, no, no. but he grew this it's, it's right the, there. He just the, sat his with fantasy him. started growing. Right, right. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. No, no. Lots of them were not. Those yeah. people weren't really molested. Okay. Who were actually molested, I figured out, more like dominatrixes. Right, right. They, that's why they do like a very... And have, have, you, ha have you had those requests also? Like, listen, oh, I, yeah, just, I, I just want you to strap up with some leather. Yeah, yeah, fucking, yeah. yeah. I get a lot of, do, lots of Can you keep it 100? Do you go through with it sometimes? 
Well, what means that? Like, will you do you do it for him, or you're like, nah, I'm not doing no, all no, that's that. Not really that's, that's too much. No, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like for with random people, like it's it's not my thing. I like more representing my strength. So you won't do it though. You won't if somebody requested that. Nah, that you're gonna that's say not my no. Thing. To, no, right? No, no, okay. No. I, okay. I I would like to start more with the wrestling thing mm-hmm. and where I can represent my strength. Okay. And I like the role play thing too. When they ask me that. Uh, I, I'm I'm a, I'm a crazy psycho girlfriend, and I have to like beat them up. You know, I this like this is kind so of role shit, play. dude. What's it's wrong funny. with y'all people? <laughs> 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 Yo, no, I, listen, I get it. I'm, obviously, I'm not into it, but I'm so respectful of that type of wild shit. Whatever, whatever does it for you, man. You know, uh, that fulfills your life in some shape or form. Run with it, you know. I, but I, I I am intrigued by it. Like, what's one of the wildest DMs, especially after the power slap? Yes. After the power slap, I, I don't know. You already got a bunch of followers, but how many, baby, I'll pay you, slap me and shit on me. I don't know. Like, what what, what kind of wild DMs came after that? Yeah, that's what every people are just asking me to. They want to, some of them actually, not for slapping, but some of them traveling here to me from Europe, you know, to that I kicked their ass again because he didn't see me maybe for four years now. He was like, I don't know when you are coming back to Europe. I can't wait no more. So he wow. flew for two, three days here to Miami and now we had two hours like resting session, you know. Sometimes they like the, I like actually, there is a, a, um, a bondage. Okay. And when I'm, res- yeah. I'm wrestling with them, through the wrestling, I have to tie them up too, you know? So this is also kind of cool things because some of them like to be tied up, but they want to get on the real way, you know? How, how, how? So, so now I get the skill to kidnap people and tie them Now, now, now <laughs> let's say, let's say, let me, let me get a little, just, just a little personal for a little quickie. How does someone try to date you when you have these, these, these things that you do? You, I would imagine. Have you given that thought now, or are you like, "Fuck it, I don't care right now. I'm just, I'm doing me. Mm-hmm. I'm doing me. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm accepting challenges and opportunities, and uh, uh, you know, the right guy can fit in there if, if the right guy, you know, lands. Yeah, I lands. had boyfriends when I was was doing this. So from the beginning, they have to know, and I mean, you guys have to know. I'm a very, very honest person, mm-hmm. and there is nothing to hide about. Sooner or later, comes out everything, <coughs> you know. Right. And I also realized from my past relationship, like if they try to hide, somehow I'm going to know, you know, the life mm. gonna bring these right. things, you know, to the light, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's there's nothing to hide about, and they, 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 um, they trust me. I know they did because I'm like I said, really honest. But the other thing, what made them insecure, that how much these people admiring me and supporting me. Without they know that I never gonna be their girlfriend. Right. They still are givers because they show appreciation for me. So they sending me gifts some so many times, you know, in Venmo support on their own. I never asking. Okay. But they really want me to see to be successed. These right. people truly. Right. And uh they are they feeling like why I'm here for you. Why you want me if I can't compete against this, you know, right. thousands of all of these guys, people. yeah, doing yeah, this, yes. right? And I so it kind of fucks with them. It, it fucks yes. with them. They're trying to be your boyfriend, yes. and that they they see all this attention you're getting. It, it kind of gets in their head, like, well, why me? Why me? Enough. Yeah, exactly. why me? If you get all that attention, I, I I sometimes take you to dinner. They're sending you hundreds of dollars, you know, like. I, and it just becomes a weird I know, it's thing. hard. It's hard. And yeah. that's why most I'm, I'm glad you're understanding of it, at least. You're not, like, trying to call them weak men and, and say, you know, talk a bunch of shit. It, it is hard. No, it's hard. Right. Especially, and they think they can handle in the beginning. Of and, course. And of they course. Can, right. But when they start to yep. love you yep. more. Yep, yep, yep. That's when it happens. It's hard. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, but... Um, do you, do you I, right now in your life? I, I was going to say, right now in your life, are, are you thinking like, you know, it'd be nice to have one? Or do you rather like, I'll entertain it if it's right, but really I'd rather not. I'd rather just stay focused and grind and do all this. I also feel that I'm a bit like, dif- like I said, I was built different. Right. You know, and uh, they also see that I'm doing a lot working all the time, wrestling, training a lot. Like physically, they see us a mm-hmm. woman. I'm doing 10 times more than they do. 
So that's also making them insecure. And lots of them in the beginning feel inspired. Like, oh, she's bringing out the best from me, like from them. But sooner or later, they realize that they can't keep up with me. Like, it's just too much. And then they're going to feel weak. So that's a problem. I get I, it. I, I get always, it. I get I what you mean. To, I always was a supportive, and I try to bring out the best from my partners. Mm -hmm. But in the same time, just they're seeing or living on the side of my life, actually how many things I'm doing, I'm just naturally making them insecure. Right. You know, not in purpose. Right. And when they're insecure, not in purpose, but they start to start to insulting me and try to holding me back or controlling or manipulating, you know? It's just a... Uh, Eventually, I, it just comes back it's, negatively. It's a, it's a, it's a most, for most of the human, that's a normal reaction. Right. And like I said, I was studying a lot of psychology, so I can, and I read men pretty well. So I'm like, it's it's pointless from this part, from from now, to keep, our relationship, to keep entertaining because it. we are losing the foundation, mm. you know? And from now on, I don't want to that any of us going to get actually very burned. We are not for each other. It may work out, but then that's the other thing what I realized. In lots of relationship, missing the faith. They're always thinking, what if? What if? What if she or what if he? So the main focus is going to be about the others failing, right? Me, I never was thinking of that. I always was like, we both together are going to achieve this and that and that. And that's why I think I'm more powerful alone because it's on me. If I'm failing, it's on me, you know? And that's why mostly I don't really fail because I know what I can bring on the table. But when I'm in the relationship, I was like, yeah, we're going to get this, we're going to get this. And I'm, and and instead to go moving forward together, I always have to explaining and and. To, to that they have faith in you, no, you are enough for me, you know, like feeding their ego. Ego, right. So you, you, you find yourself in these situations where you kind of got to stroke the man's ego in order to make him feel yes. more of a man because he's not matching that energy and that. Exactly. That. The, the both, so even if you have nothing, no foundation, mm. well, even if, if he has a traumatized life, I had still can could work out if we both going to have a faith. Mm -hmm. Look, like I could, I wouldn't be here in the United States if I have no faith because sometimes so there was a part of my life I had nothing. I lost really everything, you know. But with the faith, you <clears throat> can build up everything from nothing, even from the minus. That's the hugest gift I think the human got. You know, so. uh, yeah. How guide yourself through faith. Let that be the light that pulls you forward. You're you creating know? Yeah. with faith right. through the faith. Right, right. Well, you you definitely have unlocked that in your in your own life, and and it's taken you this far. You know, and and not everybody's gonna do the same. And you know, you you, you learn as you get older. You're, you're right there at that age. You know, where it's like, okay, I gotta pick and choose my battles because I got I'm 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 spending so much energy on what I'm focused on, yes. which is me this, me that, this, that, whatever, whatever. I got to choose my battles of what argument to have, what what conversation to debate. Really, is this worth it? This It exactly. sounds like it's not a big deal, but this was 20 minutes that I just wasted talking to you about this. And all I did was frustrate you, frustrate me. Now I'm going to get in the, you know what I mean? It's yes. it's more than what it is. You only have so much energy. So I agree with you. And, and it's great that this formula you have has taken you this far. Don't expect people to understand it. Don't expect no. people to, you know, because it's it's not. You're a rare breed. You are a black sheep. You are very rare yes. in a, in a in a in a flock of so many. You're very rare. You're very unique, and and with that comes the responsibility of. It just I'm, didn't I'm, meant for me to live the life what most people exactly. Maybe exactly. not. Maybe one day. Yeah. I don't. Know. Oh yeah, it's not give up faith. It's not say no, that no, it won't no, happen. No. no, but you know, your focus. I, I I'm think, running a different path. Right. You know? Right. And and it, and it can still happen while you're on this path. But as long as you stay focused on the path, and that's just it, because this is what you're doing. This is what you worked so fucking hard for. This is you know farm life and everything else. Thirty two years later, here you are. You don't need something throwing that back. Either you compliment this journey that I'm in, jump in, compliment it, help support it, become part of it, as I will do my best to 
whatever your journey is, and let's do this together. But the minute you start holding me back, questioning and hold everything that I work so hard for, nah, we don't need to entertain this. We need, we need to we need to stop this like ASAP. So I, I think you're going the right direction. And speaking of the right direction, I think I think that BKFC fight is is calling for you, and you should do it. Um, I, your strength. The way you absorb so much knowledge, you know, learning from MMA masters and all these sports and martial arts that you've done, and the fact that you're just so op opportunistic and you just want to take all these challenges, why not? Yes. Fuck yeah, what else? What else is out there, you know? I mean, I know you want to do MMA. Girls are dodging you. I think they're going to keep dodging you un until they, they have no choice. BKFC, they won't dodge you. They won't allow them to dodge you. Yes. I, I think you would do phenomenal in there. I, and, I would love to. I, I want to see you there, and I, I, hopefully we can help do that um, for all the viewers and, and listeners. But, um, Frenchie, I want to tell everybody everything, every, every which way that they can reach you. Um, Instagram is Francesca with, spelled improperly, F-R-A-N-C-E-S-C-A. So, underscore F R A N. I uh, no uh, sorry my Instagram name is underscore and Francesca because right. it's easier for them right that's why okay so uh, they can follow you on Instagram yeah. there underscore Francesca underscore S Z A B O okay and they have Sheena dot com Sheena S Sheena Wrestler oh sorry Sheena Wrestler yes my apologies Sheena Wrestler Sheena S H E E N A Wrestler dot com yes in case they got any requests no one's gonna judge you yes. No one's going to judge you. Or if you're looking for a therapist, I'm here for yeah, that there too. there you go. I mean, Involving some wrestling. <laughs> try something different, guys. Stop paying a fucking therapist $150 just to yeah. hear, you know, this, this is better. This is, I think we're this right. Is you new, get that point. <laughs> new solutions. Why not? I think so. Um, but you've been awesome. I think your story is awesome. I'm going to be following your career for sure. I know you'll be in the BKFC for sure. I'm going to holler at my boy, Serge. Serge, let's make this happen. Um... And and shout out to MMA Masters, man. Shout out to Daniel Valverde. Shout out to Caesar. I'm sorry, I don't know Caesar's last name. They're they're great coaches. A great great gym over there. I know they're gonna do big things with you. So that's awesome. And Jill, thank you. I know you're watching. Jill, thank you for putting us together. I uh, appreciate you really coming over here, thank Francesca. You so, much. so nice meeting you. So nice getting to hear your story. I can't wait for the next slap. The next everything in your journey. I know you got a lot coming. And I love people who do that, embrace it, and enjoy it, and, and fucking kick ass. Thank you, you very much. I appreciate it. Guys, take care. Make sure you show your support. Go follow her. Follow the, uh, the podcast as well. Love you guys. Take care. Appreciate it. Bye.